the components they are building is our metadata uh, mappings and, and crosswalk metadata mappings and crosswalk registry. Um, and then second is biodiversity digital twin that was we just heard about and third one is about uh, ELTER, the European LTER research infrastructure in making. Um, and as Sharif mentioned, uh, ELTER is one participant in the BioDT project, uh, trying to aiming at uh, providing long-term ecological, so also other kinds of data to the biodiversity digital twin. So to start with, what is ELTER? Uh, there are a bunch of acronyms. Oh, next slide, please. Bunch of acronyms uh, that needs to be um, maybe explained. So ILTER is the network of networks, which is the international collaboration in ecological research. Um, and then LTER is the original North American long-term uh, site-based ecological research network that is still existing. Um, and, and in North America, um, it's represented by knowledge network of biocomplexity can be, and also um, data one is, is um, supporting this or sharing the data, but it, the participation is still, it's global and mostly national. Then there's LTSER, long-term site-based, also socio-ecological research network, uh, which has also na national participation. And this LTRI would be the European long-term uh, ecological research infrastructure that aims to uh, have kind of a regional component. Um, it's currently still part of the LTER uh, national participation network. Um, but there are three different projects um, that try to build an infrastructure, distributed infrastructure for Europe. Uh, it's on the European um, strategic research uh, roadmap, S3, and, and it, the, it's aiming to become uh, a distributed RI with governance model and secured funding. Uh, it's called ERIC uh, in Europe supported by the European Commission. Next, please. So the cu current uh, ELTER, European ELTER RI consists of 26 countries and it has uh, 500 registered sites. Uh, we have a metadata catalog uh, which lists uh, the facilities and also the data sets or the monitoring data that um, are collected or have been already collected for years. And this metadata catalog is called DAMES SDR. Um, and uh, they also have a vocabulary called ENFTES, uh, which lists those uh, variables that are being measured in each site. Um, and so DAMES SDR um, lists sites, data sets, sensors, and activities that are going on at the sites. Uh, then with these projects, we are building um, more uh, components. Uh, currently, they are just pilots, um, not yet um, in production, but uh, in making. Uh, one is digital asset register, which would possibly also serve other uh, digital twins uh, that the European Commission is, is supporting. Um, and this would replace then the data set um, metadata registry. Um, and the dames would continue being a site uh, register and, and, and um, list what the sites have. Uh, then there would be a map interface called EcoPortal and central data node, which would then be a, a platform for publishing data products uh, with their uh, provenance data and the, the possibly the processing code um, and data labs. It would be the staging area for preparing the the data products. Um, currently, there is also kind of a tendering uh, round going on for, for expressing interest for organizations uh, who might want to be um, involved in, in uh, developing and maintaining this, this um, in the permanent structure. 
uh, the core of the Elter RI, next please, would be um, to um, establish a mandatory monitoring program uh, that the participant node would um, sign up for, uh, depending on where they are and, and what kinds of acti activities they are doing. Uh, the, the aim is to standardize those uh, measurements or, or the monitoring they are doing already, perhaps. So the, the, there's a discussion paper that listed um, possible variables uh, with the aim of the idea or, or the idea that uh, these variables would be then comparable through time. And for direct measurements, this is easy, um, although, although equipment and sensors uh, may be more better or more accurate uh, when time goes by. But for biodiversity, this is uh, very challenging, as most of us know. Um, so here, uh, the biodiversity variables are divided uh, into biodiversity, structural biodiversity, and also then uh, variables describing biotope quality, both on terrestrial and aquatic environments. And uh, the conclusion is that, uh, that we would need quite a lot of raw data, um, and this should come from kind of automated collection and observation methods that are not dependent on the human factor in, in monitoring protocols often like bird watching or, or such where, where the interpretation of, of the human doing the monitoring uh, is a factor. Uh, there are um, already in Finland also and Sweden uh, projects that collect sound recordings or photo traps or malaise traps uh, and other bulk samplers and then do eDNA or metabarcoding uh, for the analysis. Um, and, and this is a good way of keeping the, the time series. You can always uh, analyze the whole time series and, and then see if there are any trends. But this is very uh, capacity consuming and the, the amount of raw data will be huge. The other, other uh, variables discussed were about energy budget, water balance, and matter budget. And also socio-ecological variables uh, are considered here, and they rely quite a bit on also national and European statistics um, to be able to compare the categories between these. Sorry, uh, you already went to the next. Yes, That's fine. So. Um, this is very much work in progress, um, but we have nice um, initiatives where there would be much potential for collaboration between different uh, science communities and data communities. Um, ELTER has published a data reporting format. It's not a standard, but it's uh, something that we can try mapping EML and, and Darwin Core and also the measurement of fact um, extensions. And then there's also iADOPT, which is uh, observable property terminal, terminology and it's originating from RDA group um, that developed the iADOPT framework. Um, and there's been also talk about uh, utilizing other extent, other um, ontologies like OBOE uh, and and then hopefully in the future there would be also elder standard observation ontology for expressing these uh, chosen uh, standard observation variables and also helping us to map them to other infrastructures. Next please. Um, there are also as Sharif mentioned in the BioDT um, talk uh, other concepts uh, that are very experimental. Uh, one of the most important being the FDO Fair Digital Object Framework, which uh, is an emerging concept. And it's also highlighted in the European Open Science Cloud as potential uh, candidate for building ecosystem of machine actionable research outputs. Um, there's also an interesting paper by Stian Soil and Reeves. Um, I have the 
link DOI there uh, about evaluating fair digital object and linked data as distributed ob object system. So he compares pros and cons of both approaches uh, as the FDO has been also criticized uh, by many uh, for various reasons. There are, there are both uh, concepts might, may be a bit difficult and we have to figure out whether we can use this for digital uh, biodiversity digital twin and also whether it can help uh, Elter to combine these environment variables with the more complex uh, biodiversity data. Workflow Hub is something that might be of interest to anyone here. Um, it's uh, originally developed by Elixir Network, and it's a way of, of um, documenting and uh, publishing workflows uh, and giving them uh, DOI. RO Create was also mentioned, and then um, Machine Actionable Data Management Plan and Fair Implementation Plans. Uh, could be um, implemented by an individual research infrastructure and those would help in automating the workflows. Uh, first, as we do in BioDT, we kind of handpick the data, check the quality, but, but once it's been documented, then it could be um, already available in a data management plan or fair implementation profile and then then it would be much easier to explain to new uh, participants how to uh, start uh, bringing the data into the infrastructure so the last next slide is that um, hopefully in the future elter will offer a large number of measurement data about the environment conditions uh, essential to both socio-ecological and ecological research. But there's the problem that uh, we would need kind of to differentiate between the collecting of raw data and then have semantic anchoring so that we can produce uh, different kinds of data products um, and then also having this provenance and, and mappings and crosswalks as uh, digital objects that could be public and, and also reviewed. So it has strong links to EML and Humboldt, the new Humboldt core and other Tadwick matters, but I think there is a huge gap still. We would need a lot of dialogue between other distributed research infrastructures and also data communities. And we were talking Tuesday um, in the mappings and, and and bri building bridges session um, that RDA could be one global community for this collaboration and um, possibly publishing those mappings and crosswalks as fair objects could be part of the solution. So I was suggesting already Tuesday and I will repeat it, uh, it would be great if we would have um, uh, Tadwick uh, interest group about mappings or, or other ways of, of uh, documenting these workflows and uh, crosswalks and mappings, um, something like that interest group, and then have similar uh, interest group in the RDA so that we could reach out to outside of Tatwick communities. And this is my take home message. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> No questions? Any feeling online? Are you hungry? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so with this, we uh, come to a close uh, of this symposium. Thank you very much to the today's presenters. And thank you very much to you for your participation and attending this symposium.